Hello again from Digicore Things. Okay, so as a quick and easy initial test, I thought uh, we might use Arduino um, to hook this up as a USB hex keypad. Um, first off, let's make some space. Let's get these guys out of the way. Yeah, I thought I might bring in my original hex keypad. That was the one from my Dream 6800, which uh, is a keypad that I purchased um, in the late 70s. Um, quite a nice keypad. It's interesting that uh, it doesn't really have a tactile good travel on the keys but it hasn't really got uh, any tactile feedback of the key engaging. Um, we have got the little nipple on the 5 button so it's good for touch typing and um, of course standard full keyboard key spacing. Um, if I hold up one of these circuit boards over it you'll see how you know, the key spacing is basically identical. Um, Right, so what we've got here is a Pro Micro 80 Mega 32U4, uh, which we can use as a USB HID device. Um, let me bring in the microscope just so we can have a have a look at that a bit closer. There we go, Pro Micro. Um, don't know whether you can read the chip, but that's the AT Mega 32U4. Get that to focus better. There we go. Mega 32U4. Um, so it's basically similar to the Arduino uh, Leonardo board. Um, and this keyboard is interfaced by a little 16 pin dill header um, and along this side the right hand side of this connector is um, the eight pins which relate to the 4x4 matrix on the keyboard and you can see I've got those just jumping across here um, going from the IO pin two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Right, so let's plug her into the USB. I'll take the microscope away now because we probably don't need to see any more there. And we just bring in Arduino. Hopefully you can read that. So I've got a little sketch here. Hex keypad USB. Sample use of a hex keypad as a USB HID hex keypad. Um, interface via a cheap Pro Micro 80 Mega 32U4 board. Um, which we select as an Arduino Leonardo in Arduino. Okay, so first I'm including the standard keyboard library, which enables us to create a USB keyboard interface. Um, that's a standard library, and we need to install a library called Keypad. Um, which is basically used for the matrix to interface the matrix keypad. Um, right, and down here we've got some variables to define what our keypad looks like. Uh, it's a 4x4, four, four, four rows and four columns for our 16 hexadecimal keys. 
I'm not worried about the function and reset button at the moment. Um, and then here's a little array where we can list the keys, which you'll notice in here is currently the same as the old hex keypad I've got, which um, actually has row 0123 down the bottom up to CDEF at the top. The new keypad I've actually done the opposite way around because research showed me that uh, the most commonly used hex keypads over the years have actually been um, numbered from 0 in the top left down to F in the bottom right. So I thought that was a better layout given that uh, some applications for hex keypads will use some of the number keys um, for directions in games like left, right, up and down, um, you know, 1, 4, 5, 6 and 9. So if we had, if we weren't using the most common layout, then uh, we would have to remap those keys in any programs to get the right directions. All right, that's better. Didn't have my mouse pointer. Okay, so down here we define the array of keys, and then below that we define the um, pinouts for the keypad. So the way I've just jumped this across um, just happens that we have pin 2, 3, 4 and 5 as the rows and pin 9, 8, 7, 6 backwards for the columns. Now I actually just did this without tracing the wires. Uh, I just uh, did this a uh, simple way via um, trial and error. Um, I just hooked it all up and um, pressed a few keys to find out which buttons I had and discovered that uh, this was the way this one's wired. Okay, then we instantiate a keypad object. Um, and then the setup is a single line, basically just keyboard begin um, to initiate the keyboard. And in the loop, we simply use keypad.getKey, which is a non-blocking call, just to return a key if one's been pressed. Um, and if we return the key, we simply write that key out to the keyboard. Couldn't get any simpler than that. Uh, you can see I've just uh, commented out I had um, serial set up to be able to output the key to the serial if I needed to do any debugging. But let's, uh, let's double check this compiles. And we can upload it. And having uploaded it, we should now have a USB hex keypad. So let me just put the cursor somewhere here. Because theoretically, when I push a key, it's going to um, take over my keyboard. Let's see what we've got. Zero. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F. Great, it's working. Let me just backspace all that. And we can now try the new USB keyboard. Just temporarily get rid of Arduino. But I'll just unplug the keyboard for the moment. I'm going to be sending spurious characters. Um, let's unplug our old USB keyboard. Take that away. And just unplug that from there. Now let's see if I plug this in, plug this in here. Right, the connections on the hexadecimal keypad are quite straightforward. Uh, we've got eight pins across here. Um, the first four pins, starting from the first one on the left, represents column one, 
column 2, column 3 and column 4. That's the first four pins. And then the second four pins are row 1, row 2, row 3 and row 4. You can actually follow um, the second four pins. You can see the traces on the top of the board. Um, the first trace goes across to this button, which is actually connecting up with the trace underneath the board that links across the row. Likewise, if the second one goes down here, third one down here, fourth one down here, and links up to each of the rows. So knowing that, we should be able to, if I just move this cable here, down to this side of the breadboard. Right. That will give us So orange is pin 9 through to black, which is pin 2. Right, see if I can figure that out. Let's just move that across and I'll bring Arduino back in. So pin 9 uh, was the orange one, which I said was the first column which is 048C which is exactly how we've got this wired column 9876 right and then for the rows we have pin 5 is the top row which I think this is going to work because pin 5 is the top row but because I've created this grid in the 0123 across the bottom instead of across the top that should actually work out right because we actually have here yeah, row 5, 4, 3 and 2 and 2 here is CDEF which should match to CDEF so I think this is going to work without me making any changes let's uh, plug it in and see what happens let's put the cursor back down there let me plug this back in we don't need to um, re-upload the sketch because we haven't made any changes. So here we go. Let's see if it works. Zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, A, B, C, D, E, F. Nice. It works. So this is a very simple example. Backspace over those. I mean, you could use this as a as a macro keyboard if you wanted to um, with your computer, but obviously the real intention of this was for interfacing with retro microprocessor projects, or if you wanted to do some low level stuff with a um, microcontroller and interface your own matrix keypad. Yeah, well that's basically working. Okay, well that worked out pretty well. It's on a breadboard quite nicely, just with some standoffs on one end. Um, could have added some standoffs at the top, but it's not really necessary. Alright, that's it. Thanks for watching.